and not raise taxes on anyone making over 400,000 grand. And I'll pay for it all, my proposals, by making the wealthy and big corporations pay just a little bit more. Like I said, do you think a trillionaire should be staying at 3%? Look, I'm a capitalist. I, if you can make a million or a billion, I, I said trillion, if you make a billion or a million dollars, God love you. But just I can't believe this is happening, folks. Millions of Americans will see their monthly benefits disappear. And the White House has already confirmed that Joe Biden will be ending the national public health emergency. And so what this means is that many low-income households, seniors will see a drastic change to the monthly benefits. Now, the White House has officially announced today that Joe Biden intends to end his public health emergency. And that means that many Americans can have to start paying for testing and treatment after the declaration ceases. So the White House folks said in a statement that this wind down would lie with the administration's previous commitments to give at least 60 days notice prior to the termination of the public health emergency. So this has enabled the Americans to provide and the government to provide Americans with tests and treatments at no charge, as well as other enhanced social safety net benefits and to help the nation cope with the crisis and minimize its impact. So a senior vice president at the Family Foundation told CNN, People have to start paying some money for things that they didn't have to pay for during the emergency. That's the main thing people will start to notice. Most Americans covered by Medicare, Medicaid, and private insurance plans have been able to obtain tests at no cost during these times. Those covered by Medicare and private insurance have been able to get up to 8 at-home tests per month from retailers at no charge. But now, not anymore. Now, what does this mean for the big topic of the fourth stimulus check? Well, several of the most meaningful enhancements to public health assistance programs and you know things like that are about to end. Most notably, states will now be able to start processing Medicaid, returminations, and disenrolling residents who no longer qualify. They have until 14 months to review the eligibility of the beneficiaries. So as part of this crisis relief package that was passed in March, states are barred from kicking people off Medicaid during this public health thing. And now, Medicaid enrollment has skyrocketed to a record 90 million. Since then, and millions are expected to lose coverage once states are beginning to cut the rolls. A total of roughly 15 million people could be dropped from Medicaid when the continuous enrollment requirement ends. About 8 million folks would no longer qualify, but 6 million people would still be terminated even though they are still eligible. Many who are disenrolled from Medicaid, however, could qualify for other coverage. Food stamp recipients have been receiving a boost during this time. Now, Congress increased the food stamps in uh, 2020, but it's going to come down again when the Biden administration already expanded the boost in the spring of 2021. So that households already receiving the maximum amount and those who received only a small amount get a supplement of at least $95 a month. This extra assistance will end as of March, though several states have already stopped providing it. The White House weighed in today because House Democrats were concerned about voting against the Republican legislation to end a public health emergency, which is coming to a floor for a vote. Now, the Biden administration argues that the bills are unnecessary because it intends to end the emergencies anyways, and it noted that continuing declarations until mid-May may not come with restrictions. The White House said it would extend that some of the provisions are a one-time final order and to ensure that everybody um, is uh, winding down of key authorities in the state. One White House aide told CNN that it will be up to every member of the House to decide what is best for the district and how they will vote on the bill. So, let's see what goes on with this. Will President Biden finally get the stimulus check passed, or will he just stand there and do nothing? We have a ton of news about the fourth stimulus check, Social Security benefits, SI, and SDI. Uh, a lot of information, folks, about the fourth stimulus payment that you should know. There's a ton of important news right here for you. From Kentucky Reserves, gentleman from Missouri is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to point out by doubling the size of the IRS, working people of America, 85,000 more families in the state of Texas will face additional audits. These families who make less than $200,000 because of doubling of the IRS. I would like to yield one minute to the gentleman from Texas. Gentleman from Texas currently includes thousands of dollars in tax breaks and rebates for homeowners to upgrade their homes to be more energy efficient. Households with income below 80% of the area median can claim a rebate of for the full cost of their appliance upgrades, up to a $14,000 cap. And households that fall between 80 and 150% of the area median income are eligible for the rebates. 
And the Rhode Island governor said the Rhode Island Division of Taxation has set up an online portal to give guidance to families in the state to take advantage of the rebate of $250 for up to three children. The governor wrote in a Twitter post, We are working every day to ensure Rhode Islanders get relief now and into the future. Child tax rebates, up to $250 per child. And three million and $4 million in property tax credits for seniors. It's going to help many people. It's going to reach many people, everybody, and stimulus checks will definitely help so much. Many Americans are currently eligible to receive up to $10,000 in crisis relief assistance. The Social Security Administration is now working on making big changes to monthly benefits. That includes a monthly benefit increase worth around $200. Social Security benefits can make or break retirement for many older adults. Millions of seniors rely on their monthly benefit checks to pay the bills, and for some retirees, Social Security is their sole source of income. For those living on a fixed income, surging inflation over the past year has made retirement more challenging. Fortunately, seniors could be due for a historic raise in 2023. Nearly every year, seniors on Social Security receive a cost of living adjustment, and this is an annual bump in benefits designed to help your monthly checks maintain their buying power over inflation as it rises over time. Nearly every seniors, and nearly every year, seniors on Social Security will receive a cost of living adjustment. And when inflation is rising faster than average, the retirees can expect large colas. In general, an average cola will fall around two to four percent per year. This year, seniors received a whopping 5.9 percent cola as inflation began to surge. And in 2023, the raise is almost guaranteed to be even bigger. Nobody knows exactly what the cola for 2023 will be just yet. The SSA has not released the official number until October. But a recent report from the nonprofit advocacy group, the Senior Citizens League, projects that it could fall around 9.6% based on the latest inflation data. The number also assumes that inflation will remain relatively stagnant throughout the rest of the year. If inflation increases, the COLA for 2023 could potentially be as high as 10%. The average retiree collects around $1,700 per month of benefits. If seniors receive a 9.6% COLA in 2023, that will result in a boost of around $160 per month. Texas is recognized for one minute. And I thank, I thank the gentleman from Missouri for yielding. We're hearing that this bill is a tax cut, but that only applies if you sign up for Obamacare and participate in all the green tax credits. But if you don't, this bill is a tax increase of over $10.5 billion for those making under $200,000 a year. And despite what you say, there is $80 billion in this bill for 87,000 new IRS agents. And this will disproportionately increase audits on low and middle income earners at a time when even the best CPA firms cannot find qualified employees. Now, Wednesday on the Rules Committee, I tried to get an amendment of Mr. Davidson of Ohio made an order that would require that all of these new hires at least be CPAs. This was rejected by every... Now, I recognize the gentlewoman from California and chairwoman of the full committee, Mrs. Waters, for five minutes. 